Hey guys, it's May May, and if you were here for our Thursday live show, you would have seen that the gauntlet was thrown down. You guys asked me if we could do this triple stamping, what's it called, triple time stamping technique with die cutting on paper. And I think we can, and so we're gonna try it out. So how this works is you stack up these papers and stamp on them at one time, but then you end up getting these three panels, right? And it's beautiful when it's done. And if you wanna see that video, we'll link it for you guys to be able to catch. But we wanna try doing it with floral paper and kind of getting the same look. Now, Shannon and I have tested it and we think it's gonna work. So we're gonna show you as we go. I wanna start by showing you how we're how we're testing it so you can do this in your craft room. So this cardstock here is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I know that sounds different. And the reason is this is the entire front of a card. You'll see why I think it kind of works out. We're going to find out together, but four and a quarter by five and a half. This set, and you don't have to use this die set. I just wanted one that had a lot of options. And this is a great one. This is the rectangle die family set from Dress My Craft. Works perfect for this. Here's what we did. So we went to our die set and we took out dies and I found the largest one I could for this outside section, okay? And then I just started laying these guys down. I knew I didn't want the next one or the next one. I thought maybe the third one. And I wanna show you how this looks. If you lay the third one down, you won't get as much um, space. Do you see that? I don't get as much space between the two. And based on what we did, although this looks really close to that, it won't be because you've got to allow for this mat. Okay. So I want to go smaller than this one. So I'm going to pick this guy up and I'm going to go to the next size down. I better do that before I put it back in. Go to the next size down and I want to try it. And I have already kind of cheated a little bit and I will tell you, this is not the one I chose because I still feel like that's too tight and I wanna have room for my background mat. Because if you don't have that mat, you kind of lose the whole um, the whole technique or the whole look. All right, so we're gonna go one more down and I'm pretty sure this is the one we went with. Nope, I'm gonna go one more. We'll tell you uh, the sizes of these too. We'll put it in the description, the size we end up used. Okay, how do I know? I cheated. Do you see that little black dot in the corner? I did that so I would know in the future. So this is what I went with. And look how much space I have left myself between here. That's so I have plenty of room to put that little background piece, okay? And then I just kept going down into the middle until I found the next size I wanted. And you're probably like, Mame, why are you showing us this? Um, I want you to be able to do the same thing. I want you to be able to pull out something and see how we figure it out, how we cipher things. So this is gonna go in the middle. Now let me show you another thing we discovered that makes this easier. So that's the die set. Now, if you have a, mag a magnetic um, platform for your embossing machine or your die cutting machine, this is the way to go to me. I'm gonna put my piece down, okay? Then I'm gonna place my largest die. You could go either way, but I'm gonna place the largest die. And having this magnetic um, platform behind it helps me get this seated. Does that make sense? So I'm not fighting it. I wanna get that where it goes. And I gotta get it there. There we go. All right, and then I'll take the next one and again, it will magnet, see, in place, and I can move it and get it straight without too much struggle. And honestly, I mean, perfectly straight, we're not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be really pretty. Whoever you send this to won't be like, oh, that's not, that's not perfect. Yes, it is, trust me. Okay, so we're gonna put this guy in like this. While yeah. it's on my magnetic platform, I went in with my yellow tape and I just went ahead and taped it in place. Okay, so there's that side. And this yellow tape is just about met, met its end. I try to use this over and over again. And then just for safety, I'm gonna put one at the top up here too. Now again, my yellow tape is really, really well used so it won't stick to my paper underneath, okay? Then I discovered that my fingernails don't let me pick up from this, so I'm gonna use my pokey tool to lift it. And now because of the way my sandwich and my Gemini works, I have to flip this up onto the magnetic sheet, but we're good. And see, now it's held in place. I've got my clear, my clear plastic, my, I mean, my clear cutting plate, my plastic shim, my magnetic plate, and then the clear on top. Then I'm just going to feed this through the Gemini really quick off camera. You'll hear it going. Uh, Shannon's going to feed it through. I think you like that part. <laughs> Do y'all hear the snap, crackle, popping? It was a lot. Okay. So now we'll take this guy out and I'm going to show you the next step. 
So this is what you end up with. I have this little piece here that I don't need. See, this is why I use that die because see how it cuts a little bit away? Now our card mat underneath is gonna show. Our card base will show here. All right, we don't need to cut a mat for this because the card base is gonna be its mat, but we need to cut mats for these guys. And let me show you what we did. We literally took our ruler and I just placed it on and this lands at an eighth. I don't know if you can see that, but it lands at like two and five eighths. Yep, two and five eighths. So you just go up. If you want a little thin mat around it, go to two and three fourths. If you want a bigger mat, you can go to two and seven eighths, right? So you can kind of pick. We went to two and three fourths, didn't we? Mm -hmm. We didn't go super, super far. So here's what we did. We just cut a rectangle. I say we, Shannon, cut a rectangle, two and three fourths by four, and that will live there. Don't worry about this open section because we're gonna hide it, right? So we did the same thing here. We measured this little guy and we decided our mat size and then, which was one and a half by two and three fourths. Yes. And then this guy goes like this and then everything will stack up. Make sense? Let's do the stacking. So this is a pre-made card base and it's in that same cream color that we're using. So I'm gonna glue this guy down first. Now you just wanna be mindful of your edges and your lines and trying to keep everything straight. I know, Shannon's like straight, I'm the worst. You should see the one we did, we tried with, it was awful. I'm not even showing y'all, cause it was so crooked. And I was like, well, I didn't do a good job on that at all. I'm using a little more glue than I normally would cause I wanna be able to wiggle it, okay? So I'm gonna work really hard to try to get this outside where it should be, up and down and side to side, because the the what matters is, what is this called? The contrast, that's what matters. The contrast between the cream and the green is what makes a difference. That's also another thing. When you're doing this, you're gonna wanna pick colors that contrast so they'll really pop. You notice we didn't use black. Okay, I'm sorry, my camera cut off and I don't know where we ended, but I'll show you what I did. I glued this one down to its mat, making sure that I tried to keep that really straight line around the edge. Now this one's gonna glue here and I wanna show you something. Do you see how it seems a little crooked? It's perfectly fine. When I place this guy down, I can kinda overcompensate for that. Ooh, that's upside down and this is important for you to see. Do you see how this flower does not match up? It needs to be down here and the big flower needs to be up here. You need to pay attention to your pattern because that's kind of the point of this illusion. It should look like a continuous page with cutouts in it. See how pretty that looks? It is so pretty. It works really well. I want to try this with shaped dies as well. Tell me if y'all want me to do that. If you do, that can be another video. I just think it would be so pretty to do like a, a circular card or some sort of shaped card. And I'm trying to get it straight because I didn't on my last one and it was really obvious. It's hard because this is sometimes crooked, but you want this to be straight, so you're good. All right, let's do this last layer. All right, I'm gonna place this one on. And again, trying to get that really nice and neat. I normally don't spend this much time, but I really want to. This is a perfect Shannon project. Shannon likes to spend time. I love that paper too. Oh, this paper's gorgeous. All right, and then this guy will live right here. Now I know you guys are gonna to wanna to know if this will work in the twisty way. You remember how we did this other one? Let me show you. I know you're gonna to wanna to know if this will work in the twisty way like this, how we twisted them. So I'm gonna test it and let you know. There you go, guys, two cards tried out. Now, I wanna say this. I'm sure someone has done this before. I'm sure this is not like the first time it's been done, but I appreciate you guys challenging me to do it because I've never done it. So I think it worked out really beautiful. And 
it's a really good paper saver card or scrap buster. Cause think about it. You probably have some scraps about this size, you know, left over from projects. Just cut through them, add a couple of more pieces that probably can come from your scrap bin, a card base, and there you go. You could probably make a lot of cards this way. All right, guys, thanks so much for the challenge. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. And if you make these, I need to see them. So please post your photos on our customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com, where you can also get lots of inspiration for your projects that are upcoming. Thanks so much for being here today, guys. And until next time, bye now.